Hello everyone, welcome to the Art Workshop. I'm Christopher Epling and I really appreciate you tuning in today. Hopefully we have some exciting and interesting stuff to share with you. If you like drawing or are interested in drawing, then this is really the show for you. Uh, I'd like to thank Pike TV and uh, theholler.org for making this possible and for producing the content available here for you. Um, really what we're talking about today is something kind of a little different than what we've been doing uh, in the past. We're going to be talking about motion uh, with cartooning. Now a lot of times whenever we think about motion in cartooning, animation pops up. And when I say animation, I'm talking about films like uh, Disney or maybe some Pixar movies like Toy Story. So a lot of these uh, animation studios, they produce cartoons at a fast rate. Now in the old days, all those cartoons frame by frame were drawn by hand. Studios were enormous, uh, encompassing tons of artists who all put in their work to create uh, film. Films took a long time, and they still do, but in the past it took a lot more. Nowadays, everything's done by computers and makes the process a lot faster. And how that's done is that one image that an artist draws can be reused over and over, changed in different ways to fit in different other film, uh, scenes in the film. But whenever we're talking about a static motion, and what I mean by static, it means it's not moving. This is an animation. And we're using one single piece of paper here, and we have to show motion with the cartoon on a single frame. You could think of this as a single frame, frame of a film. Now, how do you show motion? Uh, using cartoons. Well, that's exactly what we're focusing on today on the art workshop. Uh, first of all, I'd like to talk a little bit about pencils even because, see, I, I like to share with, with uh, my students when I'm teaching and, and viewers too what, what, it, what I'm using. So you at home can participate with the same materials that I have or something similar to what I have. Pencils are important for uh, sketching out because to show motion or to show something moving on a, on a static or um, you know, non-moving uh, piece of paper like we're using here, um, it, it takes some sketching. So you, you may have to erase and go back and change things over. And I've been drawing professionally since 2010. And in that time period, you know, I still I, I erase a lot. Sometimes I get it right on the first try, but oftentimes I'd say 99% of the time that's not the case. So pencils are the key. And we're going to talk a little bit about pencils before we get started actually drawing today because a lot of people may not know this, but pencils come in different shades. So let's look at this now on the overhead, and I'll pull up a little scale for you so you can see exactly what I'm talking about, okay? So scales with penciling it, it vary from what we call H uh, all the way to B. And, and that's, a, that's a scale system. And here's a scale system so you can see it um, in front of you here. So with this scale system, what we have is, is light to dark. So you can see here, based on what I'm showing you, that uh, the scale runs from 9B, 8B, 7B, 6B, all the way down to uh, B. And then it starts over to HB, F, and then goes H up to 9. So this is a scale system for pencils. This particular pencil here is a 6H. So it would fall into this category right here. Now, you could buy uh, pencils in sets, or you could buy a set that has all of this stuff on it. You can have, you know, every single variation of, uh, of uh, uh, in intensity with the, with the type of uh, graphite that's in that pencil. And you could buy a set that runs this whole gamut from uh, 9B all the way to 9H. And what this does is shading, so with different colors and things, and I mean shades, uh, not color, but you could get different shades out of your pencils using this scale system. Um, I'm going to show you another um, example here while we're looking at pencils. So here we have one of the pencils uh, from this system that I showed you right here. But there's also other types of pencils like your standard school pencil. Now if you look here, this says HB. If you've ever wondered what that meant on your, on your school pencil, standard number two school pencil, that falls in on the scale right here. So it's right in the middle. It's not the darkest and it's not the lightest. So if you've ever wondered what that little HB meant on your pencil, well, that's what it is. It tells you exactly uh, where it falls in this scale. Now, the other types of pencils that you could use at home, of course, are, are mechanical pencils. And this is just a standard mechanical pencil. This is a big uh, 0.5 millimeter. 0.5 means the size of the lead that's being used in that. And then also you could get a little more technical. This is a um, Jet Smooth Extra Black uh, Prismacolor Ebony Pencil. 
so it's a very, very dark pencil. And then you can move on to some more elaborate types of um, mechanical pencils. Uh, this is a Pentel. Um, uh, it's a, a Graph Gear 500. You can find these in any department store that carries art supplies. All of these are available to you. And there's a little bit more technical um, mechanical pencil, which is this one. The difference in these two is that these pencils, uh, both these mechanical pencils, you can replace lead in the end here. And so when you run out of lead, you just push, you fill it up, and you, you, you get the lead out of the pencil by pushing down um, on, the, on the tip. This one's a little different. Uh, this, this particular pencil you have to sharpen. Now with these wooden pencils, you stick it into a typical pencil sharpener, but with this one, uh, you have to pull the lead out, you have to use this device, you have to stick the pencil uh, lead down into that and rotate around the pencil lead. Now this is called a technical pen or pencil, I mean, or a, uh, uh, what's often used in, in architectural planning. Now I like this pencil a lot, and this is the particular pencil I use, but it doesn't matter any of these pencils, all the way from your standard two pencils, what you can use at home. My main point in this is don't use a pen because whenever you're sketching and using motion to show um, uh, variations of motion with cartooning, you want to be able to have something you can sketch with. So uh, you're making lines, you're erasing, and, and that's the whole point. So let's talk a little bit about motion since we already uh, have the um, uh, overhead on and we're sketching out here a little bit. And if you remember, we do a whole lot of things with, with circles and shapes in this show. So we'll draw a certain circle and then we'll build our framework. Um, say we're drawing a person, we will uh, build our framework then, you see, uh, around these shapes and we'll go back in then and we will um, put the detail around sort of what you can imagine this being like a skeleton, right? This is a framework to go by. So if you're not familiar with how we draw with the art workshop, we use this Marvel method. So how we're showing motion then in this, we're going to still be sketching out using this type of system, a um, little bit different, but so let's say we want to draw someone uh, pointing up to the sky. So I'd start out with a circle for the head, okay? Now I would draw the line bent some, okay, going down to the first foot, and then here's the waist right here, and then the, the other foot will be sticking out a little bit, uh, the arm will be going up. This arm kind of pulled back a little bit. And what I want to talk about with you now is the line of motion. Now, what that means, it's an art term, the line of motion. And what line of motion really means is, if you can imagine that this whole entire drawing that I did um, went in a certain uh, trajectory or was pointing towards a certain direction, uh, that's your line of motion. So the line of motion here would go up like this. So you see how that follows the bend of the body. And that's what we're talking about with line of motion. And when you're trying to draw cartoons showing motion, you have to keep that in mind because that impacts uh, a lot on how you're going to be drawing um, that particular uh, cartoon. Okay? So for instance, if we're drawing someone picking up a heavy ball, right? So we'd start out, we will draw our circle for the head, and we can imagine our line of motion after we do this. So the body's going to be bent over, so there's our line of motion, bending down, right? Here's our waist now, a leg coming up, bent down. So you see the line of motion here, how it curves. It's almost just the shape of the body or the cartoon you're drawing, the line of motion. Um, so we're going to be drawing this person picking up a heavy ball or a boulder. There's their elbow here, their hand will be down here, right? So we then can go ahead and add the heavy boulder in there that they're picking up. It's coming around like this, down. So there's this heavy ball. It's a medicine ball. He's at the Pipeville YMCA working out, he or she. And there's the other leg coming down. You can tell he's straining a little bit. Maybe we could draw some sweat coming off the head later, right? So our line of motion then, as you can see, comes up this way and it forms a bend here. That's our line of motion. So then after you have this, you see, you could go back and you could add the detail. There's an ear, there's the hair, okay, and the nose, and he could be straining a little bit. You see him straining, he's got his, he's making a grimace, 
shoulder coming down, t-shirt there, back coming up down this way. So the line of motion helps you in determining where to put the lines, where to put your shapes that help guide your drawing. And we're going to be doing a step-by-step -step example here in a little bit so you can follow along with me at home, okay? So here's his bend of his legs. I may have made his legs a little too short here, so I could compensate for that and try to fix it now. Bring it down. He's got his tennis shoes on. All right, so you can see kind of how that works now. And then he's pulling and lifting up that ball, right? Put some beads of sweat in there. And there you go. You have sort of a cartoon in the making, right? Now, another thing we want to focus on with line of motion is when you're sketching out for your cartoon, whatever that is, um, you, want to, you want to maybe think about in what direction that this cartoon is going to be moving in. And I can show you a couple examples here real quick. Uh, this particular example is, uh, shows three different, three different cartoons in motion. Uh, it may be a little difficult for you to see, but you can here. So this cartoon is pointing, right? So see the line that I've, I've drawn in red going out that way. Uh, this particular person swinging a bat, so the line of motion's going this way, and this person's running, so the line of motion is going up towards the top, right? Okay, line of motion's important whenever you're showing uh, any type of motion. Here's another one, for example, for drawing animals. So animal movements, such as this um, cougar or panther, or a lioness, I guess, either one. Um, the line of motion here is bent down, so the animal is actually moving uh, downward, right? And the line of motion for this one is moving upward, so the, the animal's moving. So let's try out something together real fast, and then uh, a little bit later I'm going to be doing a more detailed uh, sketch of, um, uh, of a cartoon that you can follow along with me at home. Uh, but let's go ahead and try this at home real fast, and let's see what we can work out, okay? All right, so we're going to be drawing a character, and um, they're going to be uh, uh, in motion. So let's first start out with a circle, right? We always start out with a circle for the head. Sometimes you could draw an oval for the head, but um, the circle just helps you to understand where your head is going to be, okay? Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the bend of the body, so the line that goes down to the waist. And for this particular um, cartoon, it's going to be bending this way, all right? So it's bending, see, at, at an angle. Almost looks like a, um, almost half of a letter C, right? So it comes down like this. So here's where the waist is going to be, right here, believe it or not. So you draw a little bit of an oval showing you the, wh where the waist is. And then we're going to draw the first, the first leg coming up like this and out. I know that's a little strange, but just bear with me. And draw a circle for the leg. All right, now we're going to draw another shape for the other foot, bending back, and another circle for that foot, okay? So based on this, you can see the line of motion is, is curved, right, in this, in this uh, uh, shape. All right, so next we're going to put one arm, and the first arm is going to be coming down like this. You draw it down to the elbow, draw a circle, and then draw it up like this. And here's where the hand's going to be, okay? The other arm is going to be up, almost like this person is getting ready to maybe throw a punch or something. So it goes up, the elbow, down, and there's the other arm. So you can see already how this, just the simple uh, shapes and lines that we've drawn, shows that there, this figure is in motion. There's, there's something happening with this figure, right? So if we were to go back now, once we have these general shapes and lines, all we need to do is draw over top of them in order to create um, our cartoon. We have our framework to go by right here, okay? So let's go ahead and start working on that. Um, the first thing we're going to do is, is go up to the head. And now I like to draw a line, this is like a center line of, of where the head uh, uh, is actually going to be uh, cut down the middle so there'll be eyes on each side, the nose and the mouth. And this is the, where the face is actually pointing. So this gives us an idea that this person is looking in this direction. You see what I mean? So the line comes down, so we know the eyes are here, the ear will be here, this other ear will be hidden, all right? And then we can go ahead and start to fill in a little detail for the head. So emotion um, is what we're gonna be covering in the next episode of the Art Gallery Workshop, but I'll go ahead and put a little emotion into this character. 
And this isn't any particular character. I'm just uh, making one up here as we go, okay? So you see how I've got the brows uh, bent down. So this character is obviously um, upset over something, right? Um, so I'm going to draw the eyes in. So we got the eyes. So now we're going to be working on um, the mouth. So the mouth may fall right down here. And we can actually draw this one, this character, like uh, with a, he's a uh, mad. So we'll draw a grimace on his face. Okay, to make up for his teeth. I'm just drawing a little line on the edges. I mean, I'm sorry, a little triangle on the edges of the mouth there in order to show that his teeth are showing. So now we got the nose here. So just a little line for the nose. All right. There we go. Fill those in a little, little better so you can see it. All right, so one ear will be over here on this side, right? So there's an ear. You can't see this other ear because obviously the head is pointed in a direction so that you can't see the head, the ear. Um, and now we can work on the hair. So let me draw a few lines for the hair. Like that. The face comes down to a point. So you can see how that works out now. All right, so now let's work on the body a little bit. So the neck would come down. So this line helps guide us right here that we drew. And you can see how the shirt collar would be right here, right? All right, then the uh, elbow would be going up this direction. You're following your lines just outside of them, not on top of them, up to this point, right? I'm drawing a shirt sleeve here. Comes up to the bend of the elbow and then into the, the body. See how we did that? So following air lines help guide us. So the line for his chest and down to the trunk of his body curves, right? So whenever you're drawing the shirt or whatever clothing your character is going to be wearing on top of the framework, don't draw on top of the line you made, but on the outsides of it. So we're going to draw his shirt coming down. Leave, remember, we got another arm to draw here, so I'm leaving space for that and it's going to be curving in to his body, just like that. So now we can work on the other arm. Now you see how the line comes down to this elbow and then up to this hand. Uh, we want to draw a shirt sleeve similar to the one we have over here uh, coming up to this hand, right? I'm not going to draw on top of my line because that would um, cut us off. We would, it wouldn't look proportional. And if you don't know what proportional is, go back and do the uh, YouTube archives of the Art Gallery Workshop, and you'll find it there or on the holler.org, okay? We have a whole episode on proportion. So we're going to follow on the outside of the line coming down to the elbow, just like that, right? And then up here, and we'll make the shirt sleeve a little shorter. So I'm going to actually end about right here with this shirt sleeve, okay? Right there. Down to his elbow, draw some creases in the elbow. There we go. We have most of the shirt. So I'm going to draw the other portion of the bottom of his shirt here. That's where it cuts off at. And we'll leave the hands here and work on that in just a second. But first, we want to go ahead and work on the legs. Now you notice this is a weird bend here. I've come down and then out. What I've actually done is left room for his waist. Okay? Because we're going to draw the waist coming up like this then around his body, right, like that. So it shows that it's going around the figure's body. We'll go ahead and draw the rest of the body there. And then now we're going to be working on the legs. So coming out a little bit and down. Now his foot is coming up like this. I mean his leg, excuse me, and down to the foot. Now notice I didn't draw on top of that line. I'm on the outside of that line, right? Okay, so then we got the, the one leg coming up like this, right, and out. The other leg is bent this way. It comes down and then in. So we're going to draw this coming down like this, draw his knee on there, and back, right? This one here will come down this line, draw some wrinkles, and then back. So he's stepping back, he's, get, he's getting momentum like a pitcher swings um, in order to throw a punch, I guess, is what he's doing. That's what we've drawn it, so we'll just go with that. So here's his pant leg, and then we're going to draw his foot. Now, we've drawn an oval for this foot here. 
But a lot of students that I've noticed, whenever they draw feet, they'll just draw a, a shape and leave it there. But we want to think about this in terms of um, if you were to actually see a real person in this position, and that's the great thing about cartoons with motion, uh, you can exaggerate things that normal people can't do, right? So um, what we're going to do is actually, though, imagine that this is a real person standing here, and let's look about how the shoe would appear if we were looking at a real person. You could probably see the bottom of the shoe, but on top of the bottom of the shoe, you could also see portions of the side of the shoe and maybe even uh, up to the ankle, right? So you see more of the shoe behind the bottom of the shoe. So what I like to do is I draw the shape of the bottom of the shoe first, like this. So you could imagine this is a, this is a shoe, right? So you see how that looks. Here's the bottom of a shoe. You may have some lines here. Something like that. This is the bottom of a shoe. Then I want to fill this space in that I've left right here. What I'm going to do is fill that in with how the shoe might look if it was actually a portion of it could be seen. See how that looks? And it makes it look a lot better this way. Um, there's his pant leg and then his shoe. Because you can see portions of his shoe here. We could darken it in so you could see it better on the camera. So see that? There's a portion of the shoe you can still see. Now we can go ahead and work on the other shoe. Now, we have an oval here. A lot of students get really, really, really nervous whenever we start drawing something like this because this shoe you can't really see uh, much. You can see the front, again, with proportion. If you don't know what that is, check it out. It's a great video. Um, it, basically, what we're saying here is if I were to take my shoe off and set it on this table and you were to look at it, right, uh, you'd, you would see um, the front of the shoe um, but you wouldn't see the back of the shoe, right? You might be able to see a little bit of the sides, and that's what we're doing. We're, it's called proportion or perspective, I'm sorry. And there's a video on perspective, too. So here, here we're going to just go ahead and draw um, the front of the shoe then. See? There's the front of his shoe leading back into the uh, back of his shoe here, which you can't really see much of. See how that works? You can see the front, but you can't see the back. So we darken that in. There we go. So there's his feet. For his hands, we're going to keep it very simple for the hands. All we're going to do is draw the wrist coming out on both sides. So you got two wrists, a wrist here and a wrist there. Okay. Now we're going to draw him having a fist, right? So in order to do that, we're actually going to draw it coming down this way, curved to it. And you're going to keep it very simple. Right, and so I'm not drawing each and every finger. You can see here that I'm only drawing a couple of lines. I've only come down from the wrist, another line down to the first finger, then I draw the first finger, and then I come out and draw the thumb. And that's all we have to do. See, we're not drawing each and every individual finger. For the other hand, we'll draw another fist. This time. We're drawing the back of the hand first, so we're drawing this portion of the hand right here. If you can look on the screen, you can see um, this part of the hand, right, the meaty part. So we're drawing the meaty part first, and then um, we'll go draw some knuckles here, coming down, and maybe we can see a little bit of his thumb. There we go. So the character now is sketched out, and you've noticed I've, I've sketched it out a little bit to uh, for you can see it. And in order to see it better, we'll go ahead and just trace over. Now, this is important. Uh, this is why you don't start out in ink. You start out in pencil first, always. Because what happens is, if you start out in ink trying to draw something, well, it's a little harder to erase, right? Um, so starting out in pencil helps you to um, sketch out the drawing exactly the way you want it. And then you go back, and you can work on the detail and whatnot um, using an ink pen, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this out. You could do this at home. Um, it's uh, Motion is something that takes a little practice in order to get it down, but you could draw your character um, in a lot of different ways.
So that's it everybody. Uh, drawing with motion and cartooning, it's simple as long as you just remember to use that framework first and draw the line of motion that you're moving in. Really appreciate you tuning in today. I hope you've enjoyed the, the um, episode. I'd like to thank again Pike TV and Holler.org for making this possible. I really enjoy conducting these uh, workshops and I hope you enjoy watching them. So from everybody here at the Holler and Pike TV, I'd like to say thank you and tune in again. Have a great day. Is it okay? Okay, thank you. Stuff, thank you, sir. I, I didn't use three minutes. I used just the... Uh, That's perfect because yeah. uh, if we come in a little short, it just leaves me time to advertise on the channel. Awesome. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, uh, it flows really nice. Good. It started in with you showing the basic stick figures and then you know, showing the, safe, the shapes you're matching. And then you have a nice step-by-step -step drawing for the kids at home to do. That's that was what... That one reminded me of. Okay. And then the only thing they're going to speed through is at the end when you shade it. Okay. And so we'll see that sped in. And then uh, uh, we'll come out of that and you just kind of basically have your wrap. Uh, okay. So going into the next episode, we could start with. I totally disregarded what I said I was going to do earlier where I was going to do the thing and it's slow, fast at the middle and slow at the end. Oh, that's but fine. I mean, if you, if you notice. This one might have to. We're sort of like just.